Bambi. Bada. Bing. Well, hello. How are ya? Whitebald here, with a surprise YouTube video? Question mark? As some of you may or may not know, I like to host a game jam called the Voltacular Game Jam. This is a two-week, no-stress game jam uh, with a restriction and a theme that is announced on the day of the jam. This time around, for the fourth Voltacular Game Jam, the limitation was that the game had to incorporate in some capacity three heroes or three playable characters. This can be in many ways. It could be like in Mario 2 where you can switch around multiple heroes. It could be that they work in tandem. It could even be three separate heroes wearing different hats. That was up to the developer and their team. The theme for the fourth Voltacular Game Jam was don't forget about the final boss. Meaning the game had to have a boss or a boss battle in some capacity. A lot of people in, that participated in the game jam had a lot of fun with this one and I wanted to talk about some of the incredible games submitted to this game jam and also maybe give my two cents. This is my first time kind of video doing this, hence why it's the fourth Voltacular game jam and not the first, second, or third. If you like it, please let me know um, and there'll be maybe more of these. I don't know. I'm new at this. Uh, you know, I, I you know I just I just started my office here at YouTube. I don't have a window seat yet, but you know, hey, you know what? Let's go. Uh, let's start off with the corruption of the amnesia. The developer of this game, Endorth, really came out swinging and leaning into the theme of the jam, really playing into the idea of memory. In this game, you control three separate heroes, all with their own separate playstyle. May it be melee, long distance, blocking. And it is your job to control all three of these as you traverse an ever-changing labyrinth. Here's the kicker. Every time you complete the stage, you're opened up to this beautiful mini-map that is made up of just wires and random pathways. Every time you take a hit, little one of these pathways and little rooms of the overall map are removed and you must try to remember which one the boss is in. You take too many hits, or one of your characters die, game over, or you're just running around blind. The thing I really liked about this game was the visuals and the mood. Often in game jams, you're trying to cultivate a mood within your game, and I feel like the developer of this really, really leaned on that, giving both an atmosphere, a theme, and a very interesting strategy game. This game, you must, you must give it a try. Next, we have Three Fish by Princex Eli. In this puzzle platformer, you play as a pufferfish, an eel, and an anglerfish as you try to navigate the level to defeat a shark. Here's the thing. Each of the fish have their strength and their weaknesses. The pufferfish can take out enemies, the eels can kind of go into narrow corridors, and the anglerfish just looks cool. Well, and, and he shines through the dark areas, but mainly, uh, uh, mainly looks cool. Shout out to Anglerfish, uh, the fandom out there. <laughs> that said, this cute puzzle platformer, though it's only one level, really makes itself easy to be played and easily pick up. So much so that after I beat the game a couple of times, I decided to become the world record holder for Triple Fish. So, you know, if there's ever a speed run for it, I'll be submitting my run. Uh, don't have to. Next we have Shapestream, created by Jared Levi and team. In this challenging tower defense game, you must attack oncoming enemies by maintaining the economy of your side, but also having to combo multiple towers and being boosted by batteries. These batteries upgraded the tower's range, attack, and shooting style. Overall, a very, very great project. Did not have a final boss from my understanding, or maybe I'm just really bad at the game. But of course, as always, maybe the real final boss is the friends we made along the way. Before we move on to the next one, let me ask you a question and answer truthfully. 
Do you like big booty barbarians? If the answer is no, well, I got bad news for you. But if the answer is yes, I have bad news for you. From the mind of Swan Song Games comes Big Booty Barbarians, an action platformer adventure game where you must control one of three barbarians with a uh, bulbous bolt. Wait, wait, bulb. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I got this. I got this. Come on, white ball. This is what we train for. This is what we train for. With bulbous buttocks, these barbarians best the beasts and brutes. Ah, come on, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm out here, I'm out here. The hardest part of this game was the ledge at the third part of the game. You must traverse this landscape and rescue Princess Apple Piecrust. I'll never understand where what inspired Swan Song Games from this. You will have to go toe to toe with some of the meanest enemies you'll have ever encountered. Slenderman, get out of there, all right? Backrooms, never heard of it. You wanna know true evil, true villainy in this world? Octopus cat throwing snowballs. That's all I'm saying, that's all I'm saying. I expect another horror game with this says the enemy in no time. Overall, uh, a great game, incredible animations, lovely pixel art. Definitely recommend. Just avoid that ledge. Next, we have Anti-Axion by the very talented Wind. Everything from the music to the art was properly placed in this charming game, where you have at your disposal three very unique fighters, all with very cool little projectiles. May it be missiles, wind, well, tornadoes. I don't think, I don't think they're shooting the developer named Wind. Though that would be a cool projectile, shooting a developer at enemies. Okay, oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Shooting tor tornadoes and shooting water. I won't spoil anything, but this developer actually had the time to create lovely cutscenes. Definitely worth a play. Next we have Bomb Dodger by the Twisted Mind of Coramine. In this hellscape, you play as a small defenseless tank who is being chased by a ghost potato with a four directional shield. The only way you can even land any shots is you have to run for dear life to the corner, stand on a spot, and wait for the timer to go down. Only then will they be able to land a couple of hits. Every time they get to a corner, it regenerates its shield, so it's constantly back and forth trying to land some hits into this boss that is too powerful for you. Now, you can play as three heroes with three different abilities. It's a challenging game and a great game. When you see that victory screen, you're going to stare outside with a sip of coffee and wonder, what did I do to deserve this game? And somewhere in the world, Kormai will be laughing as he readies the next level. Definitely worth a try. You should play it. In the game, My Boss Sucks by Murbit1, you play as an employee trying to traverse the office from one point to the other. Here's the thing. Your employees, much like real life, spawn from the left and move to the right, blocking you in every attempt. If you run face to face with your employee, boom, game over, you have to start again, much like real life. The art is lovely, and though I was not able to traverse the first level, the developer has assured me they'll be maintaining this project to the best of their abilities. So definitely check back if you have some time. Next, we have Final Game, made by Minsky, winner of the two hardest games I've ever played. If you're a longtime fan of the Voltaclo Game Jam, you probably remember Minsky's previous games. Though I've beaten all these games, as I tell myself, Minsky proves once more how talented they are as a developer. All jokes aside, his games are just polished and final game is no different. In this game, you play as a burly gentleman with a beard rivaling even mine as you go up and down a street attacking your boss and trying to avoid a coming storm. 
The art is beautiful, the controls are solid, and I played it for a little longer than I should. Though of the previous games, this was probably the easiest one of the four, basically proving to me that there is some mercy in his heart. Definitely worth a try to play Final Game and any game Minsky's put out previously. In the game Star Sister, you play as three sisters of stars, each with their own abilities. You must juggle controls of all three of them, unlocking certain switches. This puzzle platformer, though not completed by the finished time, was still able to be submitted for at least a mock-up of what the game will eventually become. The developer has said that they apologize for not being able to finish it in time, and they will not be abandoning the project and working on it forward. So, I'll be checking back, and I really recommend anyone else who likes cute pixel art and a lovely color palette to really give this game a look. Next, we have Arcade Defense by Mass Caronet. In this colorful tower defense game, you control three helicopters, each with their own unique abilities. One can build turrets, the other one shoots mortars, and the third one collects money. I will admit, I did not know how to collect money at first, and this game was a lot harder in that way. I don't want to spoil much, but it has a boss battle at the end, and I'm excited to see anything the developer wants to add on to this project. I'm a sucker for tower defense games, and I probably play them a little bit more often than I should. Next up, we have Bigglesworth Revenge by Tiny Justice to Anion Mixu to Carry to Lee to Mac Dub and to Flying Westy. This game was made in Unreal and really, really made me want to think of maybe playing around with the Unreal game engine. Though the team did tell me this was more of a tech demo, this team really came together and created such a pretty, pretty premise. In this game, you control three lovable cats, all with their different abilities. May it be wrestler, ninja, and assassin. The effects, the art, it's mechanically sound. I won't even say anything more than you should play it. Bigglesworth Revenge just asks me, is this a sequel? Where's the prequel? I need to know the story. I want to be a ninja cat. Oh, please let me be a ninja cat. In the game, Tetris Heroes, made by Abstract Coast Studios, previously Doofus Develops, it really asks you, how good are you at platforming? On this interesting take of the classic game Tetris, you play as three types of heroes with their own different abilities and three different level types with their own graphics. The best way you can explain it without spoiling too much is, have you ever played classic Tetris and always wondered, what if I was a platformer at the bottom and had to wall climb my way up as the blocks are falling? Well, now's your opportunity. I'm pretty sure if you beat this game in all three modes, I think an envelope gets sent to your house with an award that says you are officially a gamer. In the next game, okay, I practiced this one, the Primo Mafasio Trio. Ah, not bad, not bad. Made by Nitric Dev, you play as three possible heroes in a top-down shooter on a hyper-stylized moving train. You can play as a melee attack, shotgun, or the rifle. I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you really want to beat this game, be careful about the final boss. It's a little challenging. It took me a couple of goes. I really wish I had cheat code, so be careful. It's a challenging project, especially at the end. Next up, we have Boss Parade, programmed by Noble Lemon, art done by Reignited Inferno, Cycloptic Spider, Pineapple Inc., Twigeon Tech, and Noble Lemon, with music made by Sekbot. You can play as three separate heroes, all with their different abilities, all the while you're trying your hardest not to fall in love with each enemy design as it comes at you. Remember, don't get lost in the beauty and the splendor of the pixel art. In this game, you must traverse a parade of bosses, 
all the while trying to maintain your health by using coffee and hot dogs. Definitely a good vibe. Nobody knows how many bosses there are, but all I can say is the second to the last boss really sucks you in. Huh? I, I guess that, that pun only works for like the handful that played that game. I don't want to spoil anything. Okay, okay, if you play Boss Parade, remember the second to the last boss, and then maybe rewatch this video, and we'll laugh together. And last on the list of games that I was actually able to open and play is Tofu Class, made by Curdle Games. Now, you can really understand someone's true feelings for you, sometimes by playing their video games, and such is the case here. In this lovable game, you must roll various characters down the hill to a building waiting below. The more round the character is, the easier it is to roll. Let that sink in. You have to roll a couple of characters down a very steep hill. More circular the character, the easier it is. The developer, Curdle Games, used his masterful styles, wit, and genius to incorporate a white fault into his game. But here's the thing. It's a cube that does not roll well. So after about five minutes of me trying to get it to roll down the hill, I came to the reality that maybe I should have been calling myself White Basketball. That said, this game is beautiful, mechanically sound, and really just a great experience. 10 under 10, I should probably call myself White Basketball. All right, I know, I know what you guys are gonna say. What about the pirates with laser pistols? Fine. If you want to know, I made a game called the Pirates with Laser Pistols, all right? It was a semi-tower defense game with a card-based thing. I overscope each time on my own game jam. Don't be like me, underscope, all right? Underscope, underscope, underscope. In my game, you play as three pirates as you must protect Greenbeard's booty. Booty, of course, is pirate talk for gold. For those who are a longtime fan of my games, probably remember Greenbeard at the end of Fishing for Friends. Yes, it's a direct sequel. Will I continue with this project? I'd like to. One thing I would love to say thank you for the game is that all pirates but the first base one was created by the very talented members of the community. All you have to do is just refresh each area and you can traverse the splendor of the pixels that is in Pirates with Laser Pistols. But be careful of that final boss. It's a doozy. And that is all the games I was able to play for the fourth Voltacular Game Jam. And yes, maybe there will be a fifth Voltacular Game Jam. It'll probably be a year from now. That said, there were a couple of games of note that I was not able to actually open and play. Um, Killing for Craft, Gagaron Gliders, and Dungeon Keeper, made by DeGrand and Evil. So I just wanted to say thank you for at least taking the time. Just want to say thank you very much to the lovely Patreons of the game, to MacDab, Star Princess, Koramai, Huge Steve, to Matsy Mix, and to Bumper Sticker. We are going to be doing a poll next week on the next Patreon game. It'll either be a creature capture battle game, very similar to Pokemon with a rule set very similar to Final Fantasy Tactics, or a game like Final Fantasy Tactics based on my long abandoned webcomic. So if you want to get in on that, if you'd like to have your OC in that game or help create that game, feel free to join the Patreon. The poll shall be coming up in two weeks from today. That said, I want to say thank you very much to Bunny Stick for editing this and just kind of keeping me on track. Um, I don't know what else I have to say. I'm just gonna, I'm just talking at this point. Um, just because I know Bunny Six is going to probably read all this and just say, like, why, but where are you going with that?